How's it going YouTube? Chris here. I'm going to do a solo video. I'm going to talk about anodizing and anodizing titanium specifically because that's my jam. Love it. Uh, so kick it right off. When I say anodizing, well, really the technical term is anodic oxidation, which is fun. So here's the technical definition of anodic oxidation. It's an electrochemical method for the production of an oxide film on a metallic substrate. And this is accomplished by removing electrons from a substance and oxidizing the anode. You guys get that? Right? You guys chemists? You know exactly what's going on here? Neither do I. So, translation for titanium specifically is that by passing an electrical current through an electrolyte solution over there, uh, I create a layer of different layers of titanium oxide on the surface. So what's occurring at the well at the atomic level here is that I have oxygen ions, which are negatively charged oxygen particles, and those are being released from my electrolyte solution and they are bonding to the titanium atoms on the surface of the handles that I'm anodizing. And so that's how we, we generate an oxide layer. So, the question is, now that we have this oxide layer, how does that produce color on titanium? Uh, and this is where the fun physics come into it, because what happens is, as you build up that, that titanium oxide, and as its thickness varies, is it is slightly crystalline, so light, instead of just reflecting straight out or off of the surface, is that it now bounces around within the titanium oxide. And then the wavelength that comes back out that your eyes perceive is with the, what makes it appear that there are specific colors on titanium. And this is why we see like holographic effects on the higher voltage colors, whereas you, as you turn it and shift it, it, uh, you know, it appears, you know, we have colors that go from like blue to purple to pink as you shift. And that's just the way that the light is coming back off the titanium and interacting with your eyes. So, and this is very different from aluminum, right? And, and a lot of people, it's easy to get because aluminum is anodized. That's what you hear about constantly in terms of anodizing is aluminum, aluminum, aluminum. And at its base, base level, you're basically doing the same thing, passing electric current through an electrolyte. For aluminum, it's actually a very acidic electrolyte. Uh, and what that does to create oxide on, the, on your substrate. Now aluminum is special because there's other processes that happen after that initial thing. Um, and then the colors that you get like black and the oranges and those sorts of things come from dyes. And from different, it, it gets very confusing and, and complicated and caustic and dangerous and expensive. So if you're curious about aluminum anodizing, uh, look into it. It's, it's interesting, but it's not what we're talking about here. So. We're going to stay focused on the titanium, titanium oxide, woohoo, and all of the pretty colors. So, all of that being said, let's, uh, let's go take a closer look at the setup and we'll break it down a little bit. So here we are. This is my setup. All right. We've got some goodies. All right. We have the most important things to any anodizing. All right. You have your DC power supply. DC people. It's important here. All right. We have our electrolyte bath and cathode. Now, if you're looking carefully, you'll see that the negative end of my power supply is clipped directly onto this. This is a stainless steel uh, catering dish, basically. And since I'm using rust remover as my electrolyte solution, nothing caustic, I can go ahead and use it in a steel basin and not worried about it eating through. Uh, and what this really does is it allows me to maximize the surface area of my cathode because uh, we'll get there in a second, but surface area is a very important thing to consider when anodizing. So, here's the basic setup. Very, very simple. But it gets complicated quickly, right? You're probably looking at this going, huh, why is your power supply up on a wood block? And it's because things get spilled and I have burnt up too many power supplies, so we just moved it up out of the way and be done with it. But I want to talk right now about uh, the primary variables that, that go into anodizing that are going to affect your color, the consistency, uh, and it, 
I mean, what colors you're able to get, all sorts of things. So the main variable that we manipulate the most is voltage. All, right. all about the volts. The voltage is what is going to determine the thickness of the oxide layer on the titanium piece. Therefore, it's going to determine the color. Uh, and titanium in colors on a spectrum, basically it has bronze, purple, blue, green, bronze, pink, purple, blue, green. It just kind of repeats itself depending on the, on the voltage. All right, so that's one thing, right? That's the one that we, we really manipulate, try and keep everything else consistent when anodizing. All right, another thing is the amps of our power supply. This bad boy goes up to 10 amps. I don't want to go any higher than that for safety concerns because um, I definitely don't want to die in an unfortunate anodizing accident. That would be terrible. It's another reason why we have everything on hangers so that uh, we minimize the risk of completing the circuit at any time and frying stuff. Right, something to keep important in, in mind, boys and girls, if you're going to be anodizing, be safe about it. <laughs> definitely be safe. All right, so our, our amps on the power supply, not the most crucial thing, but the more amps that we have, it allows us to push through resistance. So it gives a, it's easier, it makes it easier to anodize, basically, in a nutshell. All right, our third variable is our electrolyte solution. There it is, look at that, nice and dirty and full of goo. Mmm, love it. All right, like I said, this is rust remover, readily available. I get it at Home Depot, just simple rust remover. I've used TSP in the past. It's fine if you want to use it. Um, I just prefer this for the consistency. And so we've actually anodized titanium in Gatorade. So, I mean, literally any electrolyte solution, anything with oxygen in it will be fine. Uh, what else do we have? So another, a more difficult uh, variable to control and to keep track of is surface area. When I say surface area, I mean the surface area of our cathode, which is all this. You'll see people use like a plastic basin and they'll put in like a sheet of titanium or steel or something like that. I said, let's just make the entire thing the cathode, maximize our surface area. And really what that does is it speeds up oxide formation on the titanium because you have more current, more oxygen ions being able to bond to the titanium faster. So, there's that. And then there's also the surface area of the workpiece, right? For example, something like this, right? Nice and shiny, a little bit different versus a, a sandblasted or a tumbled finish. Each has a different surface area. So the way that it's going to interact with your current and with your solution is going to be a little bit different and the color presented will be a little bit different as well. Um, I'm going to hook up this hook right here because we're going to show you a, a little example as we get to it. So all I've done here, hooked up a, a hook, I'm going to throw this bad boy on there, we'll get to it. Um, so I got a little off track with the surface area and also your substrate finish will affect the color as well and that's going to affect the structure or, or how your oxides form and how it refracts light back out so that's why uh, like a blast and tumble finish is going to look different than a satin finish something like that so and then there's a bunch of other little little variables like the temperature of this will affect the color um, I mean it, we can kind of go on and on and on and I do my best to control all the variables with this setup though it happens so without further ado let's go ahead and get into some examples all right so here we have a titanium piece I, I just did it as a 120 satin finish on it scotch bright at the edges and I'm just going to show you sort of the progression and the beauty so what I'm doing here is I got my Start at 15. We'll start at 15. 15. Start at 15, which is going to be bronze, and we'll kind of work our way up. Let's see how quick that went. 
bronze. But now, make sure we don't contact. Good. 19, 22, 25, 30, 35, 40. And this is getting into like sort of a really light bluish kind of green. And we're getting close to green. 41. 45, 50, 55, 60. You see, we're not getting really tremendous changes. Right? And once we get up over 60 ish, right, we get into the high voltages. Now, now I put this little guy in here because we're going to have some real fun with that. So this is multi-etch, the chemical that's in here, it helps, uh, I'm not sure chemically exactly what it does with the titanium, but I know that it gives me much better colors at higher voltages, and that's where the real fun part of uh, titanium anodizing comes in, is the high voltages. So, I'll start back down low, about 15 again. There we go. 20, nice purple. Going up to the blues. And 40. Alright, here's where we started motion out last time. You can see we got a little bit of nice green. Green's coming through. Let's keep it going. So now we have a real bright bronze. You can see the pink coming in now. About 70 volts. We keep going. It's a nice sort of purple. Do a blurple. All right, and then we're about to get into my favorite color, which is this sort of in-between, I call it cyan, blue-green. And get up into nice toxic green. Let's see if you can't see that color a little better. Nice toxic green. kick it up even higher. I'm at 100 volts right now and that's when things start getting really interesting. There we go. This is 120 volts. Let's, let's back that off, turn it off, because we like to be safe. So there, you I mean there's the Sort of the, the full, full spectrum, and then this is weird pink color. Cool. Uh, so, and from this point, now well, here's the real secret. Right, is we can go through and we can manipulate the voltage, and we get the colors that we want. But the beautiful thing about anodizing, and this is the secret to all of our finishes. If you're ever wondering how does he pull this off is that you have to keep in mind is that lower voltage or higher voltage colors will not be affected if you go back and do them with a lower voltage. So what that means effectively is, let's say for example, I have this weird pink thingy. Right? What I can do, walk with me. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna give a quick satin on the flat and I'm gonna show you that we can go back and put bronze or blue or some other color without affecting the rest of the anodizer. So look, satin that off, 
kind of see the, the difference that we got working. So now, now that we've removed that, if we go back, I want to put blue on here. So for blue, we're going to do it about 30 volts. Check this out. Boom, bring it up to blue. A little rinsey poo. You can see I got blue on the flats. The rest of it is unaffected. So, and by, by mixing that and removing and masking off and doing various things, that's how we're able to, to get a bunch of different colors on one single piece of titanium. So there, there's a, there's a little bit of titanium inside for you and some anodizing. Um, you know, let me know questions in the comments and I'll, there you go. There's, there's my, my little take on anodizing. All right, people, thanks for coming on, on that adventure with me. There's anodizing in its nutshell. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. And if I need to, we'll expand.